Welcome to the Fitness Fest podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia and I'm the president of KIPPS and Time to Train Fitness. Today we have a very unique story to share with you. We have James Patrick. He is the owner of Fitposium, something that you might see out there. You might see individuals doing um, trade shows, conferences, but also being on magazine. You might be like, how, how, do you, how do you do that? Where does that come from? So James is, like I mentioned, the owner of Fitposium. James, thank you for coming on the Fitness Fest podcast. Tyler, my man, so excited to have a chat with you. Appreciate you having me on. Definitely, definitely. So before we get into all the good stuff down the road, share with us, share your story in the fitness industry, and just give a little bit of background on James Patrick before starting Fitposium. You know, I think as so many of your listeners can attest to, where we are today is not necessarily where we intended to end up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my trajectory was really just following a path of unknown roads and just seeing, well, what would happen if I walked down this road for a while? And it really, for me, it originated with journalism. I was a journalist in mm -hmm. college and I was mm -hmm. working as a journalist until one day I was working at a newspaper and my editor came to me and said, I need you to go take photos to go along with one of the articles you're writing because because all of our staff photographers are on assignment. So he put a camera in my hands and he sent me on assignment. And before I got out the door, he says, well, hold up. Do you know how to use a camera? I was like, no, I have no idea how to use this thing. I assume there's an on button. And that, that was really my first entry point into photography. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing about photography for me is it was a new way. I mean, I'll, I'll give the professional answer. I'll give the, the honest answer. The professional answer is a new way for me to tell stories. The honest answer is, hey, I get paid twice now because mm -hmm. I have to write the article, which I get paid for, and I get to take the photo to go with my article. So, and I'm, I'm a college student right now. And that to me was, was honestly very appealing at the time, but I never really saw a trajectory in photography because well, I didn't know any professional photographers. I knew people who worked in media. I knew journalists. And so I was just doing what was in front of me. Uh, flash forward a little bit. I'm working at a separate newspaper and the publisher of the newspaper decides that, no, James, you're not going to be a staff writer. You're actually going to be a staff photographer. I'm not sure if he saw a lot of uh, quality in my photo work, or he just really didn't like my writing. That's still up for debate. Mm -hmm. But either way, I ended up in the photo pool. After a couple issues there, I was promoted to be the photo editor of that newspaper, mm -hmm. which meant that I oversaw the entire uh, team of photographers. I sent photographers on assignment, but I was also in charge of the really the visual curation of the newspaper every issue. Did the same thing in a magazine after that. But after college, I took a safe job. Because once again, it, what are we indoctrinated with? We're indoctrinated with, well, take the safe job, you know, get the regular paycheck, the 401k, the insurance, the benefits, all of that. And I went that route and I ended up working in marketing. But while working in marketing, now I'm starting to realize that there's this itch beneath the surface. And I notice that I'm spending every one of my evenings going out to take photos. I'm spending all my weekends going out to make images. I, I literally, if I, if I scrambled together eight hours of sick time, I took a sick day and I went and I made pictures. Mm -hmm. That to me is a sign that I needed to be doing something else. And this was one of the things I learned about passion. I hear a lot of professionals talk about, well, I need to do my passion. I need to go pursue my passion, but I don't know what my passion is. And I think that is a misnomer. Mm -hmm. I don't think you know what your passion is. I had no passion for photography when I was handed a camera. How could I? I had never taken a photo before. I had no passion for, for writing until I started writing. I had no passion for doing public speaking until I started public speaking. I definitely did not have a passion for podcasting because who knew what a podcast was by the first <laughs> time I jumped on a mic. You develop the passion by doing these things. It was by taking lots and lots of photos that I realized, oh, wait, there's a calling for this. And at that point, I started to shift my work from working in marketing to just doing photography. But then came the big shift that we had in 2008. Uh, you know, the, the economy just <laughs> completely bottomed out. Mm -hmm. And I noticed all my clients went out of business. Now, at this time, as a photographer, I'm shooting everything. You know, I'm, I'm photographing portraits, commercial photos, architecture architecture, fashion, beauty, actor headshots, uh, 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 birthday parties. I mean, if you had something that you needed an image of, I wanted to be the person that you were handing that paycheck to. But the problem in that was I wasn't known for anything. I specialized in nothing. And my business as a photographer was bottoming 
out as well. Uh, and it was, it was so bad that I said, well, thank God I have this job in marketing because I think I'm just going to quit being a photographer. It was, it was a cute hobby mm-hmm. for a while. But you know what? Camera's going up on the shelf and I just need to get, quote unquote, serious about my marketing career. But that didn't sit well with me. And I'll be honest, it really, it really bothered me to, to have that thought or to have that approach. And so I said, well, what if I just did one thing? What if I just focus on one style, one type, one genre of photography, and I just owned that thing, and it was still my little side hobby, which I hate that word, but it was, it was the only thing I could classify it as. And for me, it was, well, what do I like photographing the most? And it was athletes. I love working with athletes, people in health and wellness. I love photographing action, but doing it in such a creative way where I'm creating these athletic portraits of these these truly amazing individuals and human beings. That is what I love the most. Is there an industry for that? No, there's no industry for that. But you know what? It's what I like shooting the most. So I'm just going to build an entire book around health and wellness and fitness and sports portrait work. Uh, And all of a sudden, it started to gain momentum. All of a sudden, I was like, well, what are the fitness publications and the sports publications in my area? Let's, let me make contact with those. And I start getting hired for work. Well, let me make contact with a few more. And I start getting hired even more. Well, let me build even more work. Let me contact some commercial clients in this industry. And the industry is taking off. The, the fitness industry is taking off at the same time. You know, this is 2008 going into 2009. We're seeing this massive surge where more people are registering as personal trainers than ever before. More gyms are opening. More health clubs. More spots more juice bars, more, more um, uh, supplement stores. It, we're turning into a very robust industry. And I'm at the front of this wave, just riding this crest out. And it was what allowed me to gain that confidence to say, you know what, it's time to walk away from the marketing job and just focus on this photography business. But years later, as we kind of culminate this together, what I learned was that so many of the clients that I had, so many of the health and fitness professionals or, or uh, aspiring entrepreneurs within health and wellness, I could make these great images for them. I could even help them get into the magazines or into the media outlets that they had their vision set on. But once that happened, they had no idea what to do with it from there. They didn't know how to tell their brand story. They didn't know how to gain the attention of an audience that was right there waiting for someone to show them what to do next. They did not know how to cultivate that attention, how to convert that attention into clients. And so I looked at that and I says, well, that is an unfortunate thing. Good thing I, I worked in marketing for seven years after college because now I can bring that together. I can bring my background in journalism. I could bring my background in speaking and I can you know, kind of meld and homogenize this together to say, not only can I talk to you about how to make the right images, not just good images, the right images, but we can talk about the marketing that goes with it as well. And that's what led us to create the Fitposium conference. That's mm-hmm. what led us to launch our podcast. That's what led us to, to cultivate the mastermind and the coaching and, and, and my book and, and all, the, all the ancillary things that came with it. It was bringing this all together. But I know that was a long-winded answer, Tyler, but really what this was was looking at all those unknown roads I walked down and then making a decision after I walked down that unknown road of saying, what would happen if I just went down this for a while and then choosing to bring it all together? Yeah. Yeah. What I like about that is many fitness pros listening will have these opportunities or even have these thoughts come up and it's, it's really an unknown. It's an unknown of if I take this course, if I take this job, if I take a risk, what's going to happen to me? And throughout your story right there, I heard that many times that you have this opportunity. I'm going to, I'm going to go with it because you don't know what's going to be on the other end. You don't know if it's going to be positive, negative. And I'm sure you're just like me when you take a, a risk or an opportunity that there is of course some thought some negative thought that comes and creeps in every now and then but you believe in what you're doing you enjoy it and i would even say i know just doing a little bit of math in my head um i'm guessing we are a handful of i'll say uh numbers off in, in age but i think we share an entrepreneurial spirit where you just believe that it's gonna something positive is gonna happen with it when you're moving from 
journalism, with photography, um, with, and then eventually leading to Fitposium. All of these items, there was a risk involved with it. And I think Fit Pros can take a degree of that in terms of, okay, maybe I should take that educational course, or which will lead to a position which could lead to teaching more classes when could eventually lead to owning your own business. All these items there that could stack up after it. But the item that stuck in my head, you took those risks, you took those opportunities that were handed to you. And I think that that's really important for the listeners to to digest and really take home with them so far in this episode. Would you agree with that? Uh, it you know it's it's important to kind of distill down because it's so easy to talk about you know uh, taking these risks in hindsight mm-hmm. and you know what I want the listeners to realize is that you, this whole ideation of being an entrepreneur it's not that entrepreneurs are fearless or have more courage than than you. Mm-hmm. If you're coming up against something, you're like, well, I don't have enough experience. I don't have enough credentials. I don't have enough background. I don't have enough know-how or whatever, whatever the, you know, the, the limitation that you're placing upon yourself is, right? You're like, if only I had the courage to do what, what the, you know, the people I hear interviewed all the time do. I got, I got to be honest. I am scared constantly mm-hmm. as an entrepreneur. I am terrified all the time. What if this doesn't work? The difference is, is that, I still act in spite of the fear. It terrifies me. And not everything works, to be completely honest. There are plenty of things, you know, I mean, I, in, that, in that short encapsulation, I, I highlighted a lot of things that did work. But guess what? There are a lot of things in this, in this trajectory that did not land, that did not work. In fact, the first time we launched Fitposium, uh, or I should say the first time we tried to launch Fitposium, it failed. It failed. It was June of 2015. We tried to launch our conference and a week before the conference, only two, not 200, two, one and two people had registered for the event. And we had a room rented that we were trying to get 50 people into this room. I only had two and we had to cancel or we had to postpone the event. That was a failure. We fell on our face with that. But it was through that failure that I looked down like, well, all right, what do we need to retool about this? Because what we tried didn't work. So let's re-engineer this. Let's remarket this. We launched it three months later in October of that same year, and we sold 55 tickets in a room slot for 50. So, okay, we made it work. So failure is part of this process. But I want to address these fears and these negative thoughts because, you know, we talk a lot about imposter syndrome. It's like, well, I feel like an imposter because I want to, you know, start a business as a health and wellness professional. Who am I to do that? Who gave me the right to do that or the authority to do that? Who said I had the permission to do that thing instead of just going to business school or instead of just taking that job in marketing, that safe job with the with the paycheck and the 401k? And the truth is, is you actually are an imposter. And that's really cool. We need to re-engineer this word. We're thinking being an imposter is a bad thing. No, imposter means I'm figuring it out right now. I was an imposter trying to grow a photography business. I had no experience in photography. I never went to school for photography, and yet I'm trying to grow a photography business. I never went to school for curating events, but yet I'm trying to create events that bring out four to 500 people. I never took a class on how to start a podcast. I'm guessing, Tyler, maybe you didn't either, but yet here you are Mm -hmm. showing (laughs) up, doing the work, and delivering to your audience. This makes us impossible imposters, but it makes us imposters who are figuring it out. We need to honor that. That needs to be a a flag that we wave proudly instead of using that as a reason why we are not doing something. Yeah, 100% agree with that. And I like the part about figuring it out. I think that's the part that some of us often... I'll say that we either lack, we lack the courage to figure it out, or we don't want to take the time. I think the time factor often will, will factor into completing a task or even starting a task with it because the whole figure, you know, that's tough. How do I, how do I start a business? Where do I go for this information? And I'll admit it right now, and this is a very honest answer that maybe I would, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't say on a podcast, but I think it's very hard to start a business these days uh, in 2020, especially in December of 2020, that it's very hard, in my opinion, with the marketing, social media, creating a website, networking, all these different items that go into starting a business. It's tough. And that's where uh, consulting comes into 
play and you know the businesses that I've helped over the years on top of running my own when I think of okay how do I improve SEO there's so when people say just throw on that word SEO SEO but there's so <laughs> many factors that go into it it's not just one thing it's not just blogging it's not just doing a podcast there's <laughs> so many things and yet we talk and we want to be business owners we want to be fit pros and i like the way that you framed a lot of that stuff and you know with the figuring it out exactly what you said we figured out how to do a podcast how to make quality content all these items and really you know i I give you kudos to all those things because i keep coming back to this word the opportunity of it and the one in my career that i can speak of is that uh, i'm not a strength and conditioning coach even though my background is in kinesiology and i have degrees and initials after my name. I do. I wasn't trained, quote unquote, classically to be a strength and conditioning coach, but I've had many opportunities too. And that's a very tough part of the industry because there's not many jobs for strength and conditioning coach. But I've had prob- uh, probably more than the average because of the opportunities I've been given in life. And you take them, you run with them, you learn. And exactly what you're saying about learning through that. How do you retool and grow from it to continue? Not just stop and, oh man, uh, we didn't get it. Let's just find the next thing. Let's figure out what we did wrong and Mm -hmm. try to improve upon it. So as we move into the the next part on here, I'd love for the listeners to get a little more idea of Fitposium before we jump into some questions about it. Can you just give the rundown of it? The ideation behind Fitposium is what would happen? That question starts a lot of the launches we've done. What would happen if, what would happen if we gathered together professionals in health and wellness to share best practices and ideas on how to grow a successful business. That was really the ideation behind why it got started back in 2015. Let's just bring people together. Now, when we brought people together back in 2015, we had, there was no idea or thought or, or, or really game plan to do it beyond just one time. It was like, let's just have almost like a giant round table where we support each other. But what we saw after that first event was this flurry of activity from the attendees of the conference who took what they learned, who took the information, the connection, and the opportunities, and they got to work. And we had people 2x, 3x, 4x their income after taking what they gained and then putting it into action, putting it into motion. So at that point, it's like, well, we need to do this again, and we need to make it even bigger. And we've been doing it every year since then. But that was really where it started. What would happen if we just got together and started talking about this? And what it has evolved into is really three pillars. We want to focus on how to build, market, and profit from your brand in the health and wellness space. And we do that by delivering three things. The first is information. We want to make sure that the people who come to our conference or who are members of our our online community are equipped with the information that gives clarity where there was once confusion. That's important because you want to know that you're going to move forward with the right tools. Okay. So information is part of it. Number two is connection. With connection, it's about the people in the room with you because everyone, it doesn't matter if it's a speaker on stage or if it's the person sitting right next to you at the event, or if it's a person in your Zoom little breakout room. They're one step away from you. I don't care if you are just starting your business and I've put a seven-figure entrepreneur on that stage, you're one step away. In some way, shape, or form, you are one step away from that person and it's your job to figure out what that next step is. And it's their job to show you how to take that next step. And that's what creates an interconnected community. That's what ingrains the speakers with the with the audience members and the audience members with each other is to honor that everyone is one step away from someone else. And the third thing, and the thing that we are so proud of is opportunity. The thing that we do at Fiposium that we've never seen at any other event is we partner directly with the media outlets. We bring the magazine editors to the event. We bring the podcast hosts to the event. We bring the online web editors to the event. So just by attending, like I think about like our 20 2019, the last time we were able to do it in person, I mean, you're an attendee, you, you will sit down with the editor of Oxygen, then you'll stand up, you'll go sit with the editor of Strong Fitness Magazine. Oh, you want to meet with the editor of Fitness Magazine? One table over. Oh, what about Inside Fitness Magazine? What about Women's Health and Fitness Magazine? We partnered with all of them. So just by being an attendee there, you had 
unlimited opportunities to get your brand the exposure you would want to have to increase your awareness, your validation, and your lead generation. So that's the thing that we really leaned into that we've really tried to curate. And it's been six years now with this conference. Awesome. Awesome. And I love to hear the positive outcomes individuals are having when they're attending. I know that with other ones that I've been to, networking is a big part of it. And I'd had, I've had opportunities that uh, I didn't quite work out with some of them. I'll say you meet a lot of people and then nothing happens after it. So to hear that you're getting that positive outcome, people are growing their businesses, that's what they want, that they're getting from attending. So that's really great to hear with uh, future ones, past ones. And I know that people listening be like, oh, I'm, I need to go look this up right now and sign up. And I hope they do, because that's what we need in the fitness industry moving forward. Well, we've all been there, which is, and I, I'm guilty of it too. I go to a conference and I take, you know, a notebook page full of notes and I'm all fired up because, uh, you know, of all the, the, the inspiration at the event. And then I get home on Monday with full intention to incorporate everything I learned, right, into my business. Mm -hmm. And then I sit there and I look at my notebook. I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so overwhelmed or you know, worse yet, I don't know if I learned anything or that could apply to me. And I just go back to doing what I was doing before. I'm like, well, I'll look at it later. And then a full year comes around. It's like, oh, it's time for the conference again. I'm like, oh, I need to sign up for that again. You know, I learned so much last year and this, this year will be different, right? We say that to ourselves and our focus, and it's always going to happen because that's just human nature, right? But our focus is, is to get people to start taking action actually during the event, to start working on stuff in between sessions, to start connecting and collaborating with people while we are there. So one of the things we did this year, because this year we had to go entirely virtual for the first time ever, but one of the things we did is throughout the entire weekend, we would do these breakout sessions where we would force people to jump in rooms with someone else and everyone got turns sharing about their brand, their business, where they're at and what they need help with. Meaning they got downloads from all the other people in their breakouts on what to do. And we would just curate the topics. Right now we are talking about your digital marketing strategy. So you cannot leave this meeting until you've gotten a clear goal or a clear action plan set on your next steps for your digital marketing strategy. Everyone has to go. Everyone has to have an action plan by the time you leave this breakout room. And as soon as we announced that we were doing that, what, what you saw was, because you saw all the, you know, the you know, 200 people signed in, you saw like 25% jump off right away. <laughs> like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. Because what they're saying is I'm not ready to say that I do this thing. They're not ready to be an imposter. The 75% the who stayed on were saying, yeah, I'm ready to be an imposter in this. I'm ready to figure it out, okay? And those are the ones who got the most, the most impact. And we had some feedback you know, from some of our attendees. Like, I walked away with 40 new connections. Wow. I was like, that's what it's about right there. 40, on a digital meeting, 40 new connections, wow. bravo. Great stuff, great stuff. What, uh, with networking, and meeting new people and connecting with individuals in other industries even or even parts of the fitness industry often comes connections and what made this next question come up in my mind was i'm a big fan of having a mentor i have mentors that are actually not in the fitness industry um just based off of where i'm in life of course i've had a mentor that was in the fitness industry helped me learn a lot of new skills with what you do and so far with your career, what you've shared so far, a lot of interesting things and a lot of things that I'll say or will be great for the listeners to hear. Have you had any mentors over the, the years? I'd love to learn more about you right now. Oh, thank you so much. It's, <laughs> um, there, there's an adage that if you want to you know, figure something out, get to work. If you want to figure it out much faster, hire someone who's done it already, right? And I look at the trajectory that I've been on and none of it, 0% of it would have been possible without people who showed me that next step. And I think, you know, when I was in college, it was, there's this college professor who owned the newspaper that I worked at, who forced me 
to be in the photo pool, who then promoted me to be a photo editor, who had me start teaching his classes uh, so I could get upper division credit so I could graduate on time, who introduced me to the person who ran the marketing department for the company I got hired at for seven years right? Who every year when we'd get together for his birthday would be encouraging me to start developing my portfolio of work and start marketing my photography services, right? Like what Mm -hmm. an invaluable contribution. Like had it not been for him, I don't think photography would have ever been on my trajectory or public speaking and teaching because he, he really integrated all those things. And I, there, I would not have had that introduction into that marketing job. So all of that happened from one connection. And then from there, I had this amazing VP at that company I worked for, one of those very proactive, uh, not reactive marketing professionals. And he was very, in just working with him over seven years, you learned a lot about client relationships, uh, the, the pursuit of projects, um, you know, relationship marketing, but he was very invested in my side business, my photography business. And he really wanted to see that take off for me. And one, one day he popped his head in my office and he's like, you know, Hey James, you really want to grow your photo business, right? I says, well, obviously he says, all right, (laughs) here's what I want you to do. Be seen, be heard, be read. And that's all he said. And then left my office, be seen, be heard, be read. And I marinated on that for a little bit. And what I realized was that was the introduction to omnipotent marketing, that what he wanted me to do was he wanted me to go out and make sure that my name, my brand was fully associated with the audience that I needed it to be by being seen, by being heard and by being read. So how did I take that literally? Well, by being seen, where are all my clients? What organizations are they a part of? What events are they attending? And I need to be involved and not just involved like I'm in the back of the room like, oh, I attended that event and nothing happened. No, I'm speaking at the event. Oh, I joined that association. I went to the networking mixer. I had a few cocktails. No, no, no. I joined the board. In fact, I became the president of that one organization and the president of that organization. I got involved. Okay. So I was seen a lot. Now be heard. Well, what does that mean? Well, I guess I got to give lots of presentations. So I started speaking a lot and giving lots of presentations. How many stages can I get on? How many places can I, and I started speaking coast to coast throughout the United States? How many people's groups or companies or organizations can I get in front of? All you need to do is ask. The worst they say is no, but I was like, okay, what can I speak on? And let's get in front of them. So then I was like, well, maybe I'm not that good of a speaker. I'll start Toastmasters groups. I started Toastmasters group to get better at speaking. And then I started speaking a lot. Then I started training other Toastmasters groups to do presentations, right? So be seen and be heard. Then be read. Well, Oh, good. I have a background writing. Let's write lots of articles. Mm -hmm. And so I started writing for business magazines. And I even started writing for photography magazines. I started writing for uh, health and wellness magazines. And I was actually combining early in my career, I was combining my journalism background and my degree in journalism with my photography as a differentiator when I'm marketing to magazines to say, not only can I take photos, but I have a background in journalism. I can write the article for you as well. And some of the first magazines I worked with hired me as both a journalist and a photographer kind of that that dual threat instead of having to hire two different people at full rates they could hire me at a combined rate Mm -hmm. and that became an early differentiator for me so yeah I've had these amazing mentors and even business coaches that I've hired throughout the trajectory some left a greater impact than others understandably but every year I, I will invest a significant amount because I always want to learn what that next step is. And I always want to be in a room with the, with people who I know are smarter than me. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first mastermind I joined. The first time I walked into the room, there was two dozen entrepreneurs in the room, like a massive think tank of, of very highly motivated people. And I walked into the room and I had a little bit of a panic attack where I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I belong in this room. That is the feeling you want to have, where you don't know if you belong in a room, if you've done enough to be in that room. That's the exact room you need to be in because that's the room you're going to learn the most in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I will admit that I actually have that, uh, that feeling, the, the nervous feeling, because I have a, I'll say a meeting coming up that my, um, my mentor is setting me up with. But it's that nervous feeling because I know that I need to be prepared. and I got to make sure that I have my questions ready. But the point I want to make is that your, your mentors, they understand that you want to learn. And I think that's the most important part of it is that 
being willing to learn. It's great to say, okay, yeah, I have a mentor, I have a mentor. But if you're not learning from them, if you're not listening, if you're not applying anything that they tell you, why do you, why do you have a mentor? What, what are you getting out of it? And what you shared throughout there is all the things that you did. You took action from what they shared with you, what they said to you. You didn't just say, okay, maybe I'll do that later. You took action on them, that you actually applied those items, which not many people do, which is so awesome to hear. And with uh, some of the items you mentioned already, and it wouldn't be, I'll say a 2020 podcast, if we didn't talk about virtual stuff, with the virtual world, and especially with owning a, a, a live conference, It'd be great just to hear some of those, I'll say maybe just share a handful of them, of the difficult items you had to overcome this year with doing a virtual conference and even maybe just the differences that Fit Fitposium had with being online and being, um, instead of being live. I mean, no one anticipated yeah. what, what we could have had really and, and, or what ended up being, I should say. And, you know, we kept just thinking because, you know, our, we have our big conference, but we host, you know, we have, we own a mastermind, we host retreats throughout the year, we kept just thinking, well, you know, we'll leave our, our summer retreat set up, things will be fine by summer, uh, you know, our early fall retreat, you know, that'll be fine. Oh, I'm not worried about, you know, but at some point, it's like, no, this timeline is really expanding on us. Yeah. And we really have to be proactive. And, you know, by the time, you know, our conference rolled around, I says, listen, I want to make sure at our conference, none of our speakers are talking about pivoting. And, you know, my team was like, well, why not? I'm like, because we need like, if people are there and they're hearing about pivoting, they're going to get really upset because they should have pivoted a year ago. <laughs> like this is about just everything that happened would have happened anyway. And when I say every, I mean, within the business context, within the, the, the fabric of our economic landscape, these were trends that were already happening. They just got accelerated much faster than anyone could have anticipated. Mm -hmm. There was always going to be a push for more online conferences and more online connection. There was always going to be a draw away from in-person gatherings. Mm -hmm. All right. There was always going to be a shift to online courses and online commerce. All right. I mean, look at e-learning itself. It was like e-learning right now, was something like 7 billion this year projected to be 20 to 30 billion within four to five years. And it might even surpass that it was always moving this direction. Mm -hmm. So what we as business owners have to be aware of is that consumer demand dictates everything. And we have to be hyper focused and aware of what consumers need in any given moment. So when things shifted, their new needs surfaced, new demand surfaced, thus new opportunities for businesses surfaced. And entrepreneurs who were very agile which is why it's great to be an entrepreneur because you can be very agile. We're able to capitalize on a lot of those new needs that surface. Now with that, lots of challenges surface as well. By the time we got to hosting our event, it was in October and people already were dealing with zoom fatigue in the summer. And we're saying, guess what? We want you to be on zoom with us, not just for a few hours, but how about for three full days, <laughs> you're going to be online with us. That's a big ask. But one of the things we did was we wanted to show that, listen, we still honor our, our pillars and one of the pillars is connection. And we need to break that fourth wall, that computer screen in order to have that connection. So one of the first things I did when we kicked off the conference was I got up and, and it was just it, the entire weekend. It was me and my video producer in, in a room for, for the entire weekend. So everything was filmed in this room. We filmed with, uh, you know, professional cameras to, to separate the webcam view. Right. So we had a professional video feed going out. It was still over zoom. It was just a professional video feed. We have multi camera set up. So it felt more like a television production for the viewer versus just another zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, any of the speakers we brought in, we controlled whatever the viewer saw. So if we wanted them to see me interviewing someone, they could, if we wanted me to interview five people, we could bring all five people up on screen. So when we kicked the conference off, one of the first things I did was I had a board set up of all the attendees faces as they're as they're watching the conference. I'm like, listen, this is not a, a standard zoom. I see all of you. I see every single one of you. So I want if this is your first time at our event, I want you to raise your hand. 
And, you know, half the room or half of the Zoom room, their hand shot up. And I'm looking, I said, okay, Max, my producer said, Max, I want you to bring up this person here. And he brought their video up on stage. And I interviewed him live in front of everyone. That broke the fourth wall where it's like, oh, we're watching you too. This, we're in the same room, even though, and we had people attend from six countries, even wow. though we are spread out across the world, we're in this same space and time together. And we're going to honor that. And throughout the entire conference, we basically walked them through how to launch their online business and what they need to think about. And through the entire conference, we're like, okay, now that we've talked about this, let's just say it was a digital marketing strategy. Now we're going to break you out into rooms of five. And your job is you have to talk about what you're going to be doing with these five people. And those five people have to give you tips and tools and resources from their own experience to support you. And we did that throughout the entire conference. And that's how people made so many connections over the course of that weekend. But we said at that conference, just like we say at every conference, the worst thing you can do is to start on Monday and just go back to what you're doing before. Mm -hmm. So we implored you, stay connected, stay supporting each other, because that accountability and that push and that trying and saying, well, what would happen if that's what's going to get you to open up that next door? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. And I love the level of detail that you put into to everything that, that you just shared there with the the producing, the quality and how to make it different. And uh, the first thing that popped into my head, I'll admit in this podcast, I enjoy movies. I love comic book movies. I love all types of movies. But with the, the comic book, uh, I'll say industry movies like uh, Comic-Con not happening all of these big studios, they had their own virtual conferences. They had them, I don't think one was called Fandom. And it's essentially kind of what you did right there. That's you, you set up a production multi-cam and that it kind of it took it away from just being a Zoom meeting and made it seem, one, professional. It was professional how you did it. But two, it was a different experience. The experience that you created, that's part of what it was going through my head when you're explaining everything. The experience for the individuals, what are they going to walk away with? What are they viewing so that they knew that what they paid for, yeah, this is well worth it. Wow, this is amazing. This looks great. It's I can hear everything. I, I feel like I'm a part of, I'm inside the screen. All these items went into it, which made it, which made it a great event for the participants. So again, kudos to you for that. So James, as we're starting to wrap things up for this episode, I'd love for you to share uh, any information about upcoming conferences, online, live, anything like that, your social media items and how they can get in touch with you. Okay. So I'm going to make it super simple. So if you want to connect with me, uh, J Patrick photo is my Instagram, or uh, I actually have a number that if anyone has business questions and I take big and small questions, I take complicated questions, I take easy questions, but if anyone has questions on marketing, on sales, on, on PR, on getting published, on standing out online, on social media strategy, I answer every question I get. And if I don't know the answer, I'll ref, I, I will definitely refer to, to a resource or an article that has that answer. But the number is 480-605-3254. So they can text me directly. It's not one of my assistants. It's not a bot. It's me directly that will respond to every question I get. Um, and then for our conference, Fitposium, uh, we are going to have a 2021 event. It is going to be a hybrid event. So we're doing both online and in person. Details are still way off from that. But uh, as, as, as details come available, it is something I post on my own channels. But for people who want to start taking action now and start wanting to get coaching now, what we have, it's called Fitposium Plus. And what we do at Fitposium Plus is every month we do live coaching. So we select a new presenter and a new topic every single month to host a live coaching session where you can learn a new tools and techniques and strategies to implement into your business. And during every session, we also do live Q&A, which means you could come on and have live coaching on you, on your business, from myself and from one of the presenters we, we have on. So we just had on an expert on SMS marketing. So I just dropped my number. On, on your show? Well, we talk about, we did a whole live session on how to grow your SMS marketing. And why is that important? Because SMS marketing has a 99% open rate compared to email at 18%. So 
do you want to get into SMS marketing? We did a whole life session on, we also did a whole life session on how to curate high ticket clients leveraging LinkedIn, which is kind of, for many people, they're like, they're, they're all in on Instagram or they're all in on Facebook. Well, the average LinkedIn user makes more than the average Instagram user and Facebook user combined. So we had the best selling author, Scott Aaron, give a whole deep dive onto how to find, connect with, and sell to people leveraging LinkedIn. It was such an amazing presentation. So we just had that one. So every month, new life coaching that all those details are at fitposiumplus.com. And if you sign up for the full year at fitposiumplus.com, you get your 2021 virtual pass for our conference included. Look at that. Good stuff right there. Great benefits. James, thank you again for coming on the Fitness Fest podcast. It was great connecting with you, listening, all that great stuff. Thank you again. Tyler, appreciate you so much. 